A lot of us have been in the same situation. Getting raises under 2% each year, you're likely not even keeping up with inflation, which means you're falling further behind every year. Rob Engen from Boomer and Echo shares with us how he creates his own raise through his side hustles, selling things he no longer needs, and spending wisely with credit cards to gain free travel. Welcome to the Maple Money Show, the podcast that helps Canadians improve their personal finances to create lasting financial freedom. Our sponsor, Borrowell, allows you to find personalized product recommendations from credit cards to mortgages and loans from trusted partners tailored just for you. Head over to Borrowell to get your free credit score and more at maplemoney.com slash borrowell. That's maplemoney.com slash B-O-R-R-O-W-E-L-L. Let's chat with Rob. Hi, Rob. Welcome to the Maple Money Show. Well, thanks for having me, Tom. Um, so I read a post of yours recently on, on your, your goals for the new year. And, and one thing that seemed really similar to my situation is uh, sort of the idea that you haven't really had a raise in, is it five years? It's been five years now. Yeah, basically keeping up with inflation, right? Uh, so not keeping up with with inflation, oh. <laughs> no, no CPI uh, adjustments or or anything. So it's been uh, been held steady, and again, that's kind of I'm I'm in Alberta. It's uh, it's a public sector job, so it's under a lot of scrutiny with the uh, with kind of the recession in Alberta, and and we're one of those employee groups that uh, I guess we get tossed around a little bit, and and uh, so yeah, so it's been been five years now and they keep extending it so now it's september 30th 2019 at Jeez. least yeah mine's uh i'm i'm in the corporate sector but it, it's still very much the same uh I, I haven't even looked back at the past five years but but I, i'm pretty sure at best i was probably getting two percent in a year um, right it, it might even be worse I'd, I'd have to look back at all the the, the past uh raise letters and see how that works out but um yeah, and I mean, like just like you, I've got uh, I've got kids and you know, growing family. So, you know, the cost of inflation when Stats Canada says it's one or two percent. Well, for a growing family, that could be easily four, five, even ten percent uh, when you talk about all the expenses that go into your household budget. So, uh, yeah, you've got to come up with some creative ways to uh, combat that. Um, so, tell tell me more about sort of this work situation. I I think you've mentioned to me that sort of this idea that, that you you get other things in place of, uh, of a race. Yeah. I mean, so it was fortuitous that uh, I started a blog on the side and that's led to lots of different opportunities. So I do some freelance writing and picked up a gig uh, writing a bi-weekly column for the Toronto star. So it gives me some profile and, and adds a little bit of income to, uh, uh, kind of top up my my employment and you know, of course the blog earns earns a bit of advertising income and you know we're able to uh, you know leverage some of those opportunities into uh, extra income for our family so my wife stays at home full-time and and she helps me out uh, on, on the blog and uh, building kind of that online business but doesn't have the employment income or that two income family so you know, we do what we can to kind of hustle and, and make those opportunities work on on the uh, on the online side. And and again, we're very similar. Uh, my my wife stays at home. She uh, she does a bit of um, uh, make, makeup and uh, and 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 doing eyebrows, whatever that's called. Yeah. <laughs> she she does she does that on the side. But otherwise, yeah, it's it's the same thing. If if you're trying to be be a a family of four or more and and you're making one income, it, it's not easy anymore. And uh, no. especially, like you said, if, you, if your raises aren't even keeping up with inflation, you're, if you're going on just the career, you're, you're kind of heading in the wrong direction every year. And, well, and the, and the online income is a bit of a lifestyle choice too. And so it allows, you know, allows my wife to be at home. And uh, when we had kids that were kind of pre-school age, uh, you know, that was really important to us as a family. So we made that choice. Uh, and, you know, now there's opportunities for her to work uh, at home and, and really help out on that side, on the online side that, 
you know, hopefully continue to grow. I mean, our online business has grown every year. Uh, we're in kind of year nine, I want to say. Uh, Sounds about right. Right behind you. And, <laughs> uh, you know, so it opens up opportunities that don't exist in just the nine to five kind of cubicle world. Yeah. Like when I think of my office situation, there's hundreds of employees in the office and the majority of them aren't, don't have that sort of thing on the side. <laughs> and uh, uh, now often, of course, there's, there's a lot of uh, both, both partners working. That's very common. There's very few people I know. Um, your wife might be one of the few that I know <laughs> that uh, actually stays, is able to stay at home because it just doesn't seem to work that if uh, you can't, you can't have a family on one income nowadays. Um, and yeah, almost everybody I know, especially in the, in the town I live in, they're, they're all basically in their thirties and, and both partners always work. It's, sure. it's just the way it is. Yeah. And I mean, there's career sides to that where, you know, uh, both partners want to keep their career uh, growing. And, uh, but there's also, you know, lifestyle choices that we make that kind of put ourselves in that bind, you know, whether that's two brand new cars in the driveway or buying more house than you can afford. And you kind of put yourself in a situation where you both have to work or that spouse who takes the parental leave uh, has to come back right away. Uh, as soon as, as soon as, uh, you know, those benefits expire. And so, you know, we're conscious about those choices as well. So we have two paid off cars and we're working to pay off the house and try not to, uh, overextend ourselves in other areas where, you know, where we see our neighbors buying trailers and, and, and rental or not rental properties, but like, uh, vacation properties, uh, or timeshares. And, you know, it's just adding to those monthly expenses that you just kind of keep having to, keep that treadmill going of, uh, of, uh, nine to five work. Yeah. It's, it's a good point about choices. Cause I, I, I see the same too. If, if, uh, you might know that with that working couple that has the bigger house and everything too, and it, it, that's fine. It's their choice, but, but certainly that could be part of why they, they have to work now. I, we, we, we both say that, yeah, the blogs allowed us to sort of be able to do this. I normally suggest to people that starting a blog actually isn't one of the better ways to, uh, yeah. to, to make money. Um, there, there's a, there's a lot of bloggers that, that do this and, and get burnt out pretty quickly because it's not really, um, it's certainly not a, a make money fast thing. Like you said, you're, you're, you're around the nine year mark. I'm hitting 10 years, uh, in February actually. And, uh, it, um, yeah, it's almost sort of that overnight success that took a decade kind of thing. <laughs> well, and and quite frankly, we're the two like survivorship bias of that, right? We we made it work, uh, whether through hard work and luck and all those combination and factors. But um, but you're right. I mean, just starting a blog and and having this income stream is probably not realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's so many other kind of side hustle opportunities, as you know whether that, and it's just kind of getting a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So for example, a lot of people could be struggling to pay their bills, but would they consider renting out a spare room in their house, you know, the, in the too big of house that they bought, <laughs> or, you know, would they consider dropping down to one vehicle or would they consider dog walking or, you know, there's just so, so many other ways to apply some skills. Like if you have some graphic design skills, there's all kinds of needs online, as you know, uh, for that, but a lot of us just feel trapped in this um, cycle of you know the nine to five, come home and flip on Netflix and order my Uber Eats, and <laughs> you know you just get trapped in that cycle. Uh, so it does think it does take some creativity to you know kind of work your way out of that, especially if you're um, you know kind of trapped from paycheck to paycheck. Um, you know we're we're hustling and and the the five years of no raises or the salary freeze is not as detrimental to me. Uh, you know, it's annoying. And, uh, and of course I, you know, you want to be rewarded for the work that you do. Um, but it's not as detrimental to our household budget and our income because of these other opportunities that we've opened up. Um, but I can totally see for a lot of working parents who are struggling to get by, uh, years of salary freezes are, uh, they really hurt really hurt the wallet. And, you know, so maybe it is time to have a look at some of these other opportunities to say, 
you know, if it's not writing uh, like we do, then it's uh, photography or it's and yeah. name any 100 or a plus uh, side hustle options that there are out there. Well, that's just it with with the the internet now, and that making myself sound like an old guy, but <laughs> with the internet, <laughs> there's so many uh, these days. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many ways to make money. Like there there was a time where if if you weren't doing well enough it, from your own job, your, your options were like deliver pizza or something like that. <laughs> it was still yeah. just traditional part-time yeah. jobs. Stocking yeah. shelves at the grocery store late at yeah. night or whatever, right? Exactly. And, and it's still that same sacrifice. You're still saying, I'm not going to watch TV and just have me time. I'm going to go and actually do something. But, but now yeah. it's, it's so much more convenient. You could, you could be an Uber driver and just turn the app on whenever it fits your schedule. You don't have to sort of balance this full-time job and a part-time job and can they conflict with the schedules and everything. It's, you can kind of make your own schedule with a lot of these, these online uh, services. Well, and there's jobs that exist that didn't exist 10 years ago. Like, have you ever heard of a social media manager back in, <laughs> you know, 2007 or whatever? Like, Fair enough, yeah. Um, you know, there, and there's lots of small businesses around your local community that could stand to use a social media manager that they're maybe not going to pay a full-time wage to, but if you get a couple of those clients and manage their Twitter and Instagram and Facebook for them, um, you know, you could turn that into a pretty decent side hustle. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm in need of one right now, actually, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, enough about me. <laughs> uh, is there any other side hustles that, that you're doing or your wife is doing sort of uh, beyond just the blogging and, and writing for like Toronto star? Well, one that anyone can do, and we've uh, had a lot of success the last couple of years is um, just selling some of the stuff we have. So growing two, we have two daughters uh, growing up. So, you know, of course we had to go out and buy one of those big strollers, the double strollers that we can, you know, push them around and carry the entire day's worth of uh, um, bags and everything that you need to yeah. take your kids out. And uh, they're expensive, but they also hold their value. And so, you know, we went on uh, Kijiji and uh, I think we, we have most success with Kijiji. And then there's the Facebook, kind of your local Facebook's swap mm -hmm. and buy sites. And you post them in there. And I kid you not, we probably made a good $800 in the first year and then another five or $600 this year. And it's just kind of getting rid of that stuff that piles up in your basement or in your garage uh, that's actually pretty useful to some other young parents who don't want to go out and spend $500 on a stroller. Um, and then we can recoup, you know, a couple hundred dollars of that. And, uh, and that's everything from a lot of their baby toys, uh, games, you know, I talked about strollers, uh, other kind of, uh, other kinds of baby gear or toddler gear that they've just outgrown, um, skates, all kinds of things that, uh, you know, they wear three times and, and, uh, you know, they've outgrown them. And, you know, we're lucky that we have two girls and so we can pass along at least one time. Um, but if things are still in good shape, we sell them. And so, you know, I, get, I go back to kind of the, the salary freeze or, or the uh, that cost of inflation that we're not getting. Uh, but really all that is is a couple thousand bucks at the end of the year. And so if we've already done that through, you know, we've got halfway there through um, just selling our unused stuff on Facebook or Kijiji and you know, and then we have the side hustle opportunity, but really we only need to make another 500 bucks or a thousand bucks a year to get that inflation back so that we're actually, you know, not just treading water, but at least uh, swimming a little bit and try to improve our situation. That's a good point uh, about how much that raise really is, is, <laughs> is uh, even when I get my, say 2%. Um, I, I kind of look at, try to be positive and <laughs> think it's like, well, that, that pays a bill. <laughs> it's like really? a couple hundred dollars a month. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And so, I mean, the other, um, I mean, there's a lot, I can look at a lot of the places around where I live where the garage is open and you can't even park your car in inside because there's so much stuff in there. And is it stuff that's, that you're using like a workshop. Okay. That's one thing, but if it's just stuff that you've accumulated and don't know what to do with, and it's just becoming a storage unit uh, for one, you know, it's not good for your vehicles just to leave them outside all day. And you know, there's 
thieves that come by and check your doors and want to rummage through your car, or there's, uh, of course, the weather in, here in Alberta and the wear and tear. Um, you know, so we've made a conscious choice in our ho house to keep our basement kind of clutter free and to keep our garage so that we can fit our cars in it. <laughs> it's a pretty simple goals, but it forces us to, you know, we, to have some real mindfulness when we bring something into the house that may, maybe something's got to go to. I'm, uh, I'm sure I've said this on the podcast before, but I, I'm guilty of this. Uh, half my garage is kind of storage. Um, now I do. I do find now, like <laughs> when, when, when I buy stuff now, I, I'm doing it very purposefully. I know it's something that, that will add some value in some way. But what I'm stuck with is stuff from like my college days <laughs> right. that, uh, that uh, I just can't get rid of. And, and you brought up Facebook. I, I actually had great success. I was selling a bunch of used video games on Facebook. Um, and I've only sold, I don't know, maybe a quarter of them so far. And I had made over $2,000. This was, this was about a year ago. Right. Now I, I don't want to think about what I originally paid for them. Cause it really, I'm, I'm losing money, but <laughs> at least I'm, I'm, I'm some thinking. cost fallacy, Tom, there are, it's already spent. Can't yeah, get exactly. It. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If, if, if it's stuff that's sitting in a box, it's been two and a half years since I moved. If it's still sitting in a box, anything that meets that criteria, it's probably yeah. time to go. Um, yeah, and exactly. I, I'm totally good with the idea of getting rid of it. Uh, but it's it's a lot of work as well. Like I've got uh, a comic book collection from like the mid '90s, probably early '90s even. Um, and I would love to sell it. I just I, I <laughs> it's going to take some time to make sure I get a decent value for it. I don't have to get top dollar for it because it's also just the benefit of getting rid of it. Uh, right. But uh, but yeah, in general though, I, I agree with the Facebook groups. I've never actually tried Kijiji, but. Uh, with the Facebook groups, I was literally in like a, a video game, Calgary specific uh, genre, group. right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's local, it's all video games. And, uh, I was able to find a price guide online. So it's, I knew what the games would sell for. I wasn't trying to up the price. I literally just listed them for the, the value according to this list. Right. But, uh, yeah, so I, I had, I had good success there and I, I've still got more to go when I, when I have the time, <laughs> but, uh, well, you know, my wife and I read a really good book. It was the getting things done. I think it's pretty old, um, but it's more like a productivity tool and, um, it kind of talks about making like, you know, when you think about the work that goes into selling your comic book collection, um, what, and, and so this getting things done, it forces you to write out the steps, right? So what's the next step? right? If, if it's going to take you less than five minutes, just do it. Yeah. Um, if there's steps required, write that down. What are the next steps? And if the next steps are, you've got to value this somehow. So you've got to research, you know, what these books are worth and uh, maybe you need to contact a, a dealer or something like that. Right. And just kind of make that plan and then start knocking, knocking off the tasks. And suddenly it doesn't become so daunting of like, I've got to do all these things. You've got a written plan in, and that's the whole point of the book is getting things done. Yeah, I think I've heard of that, but I haven't read it. I'll, I'll make sure I check that out. It's um, so, so speaking with these comic books, speaking of a plan, I think uh, a simple first step would just be to sort of pull the ones that I think have any value. It, it, it's pretty obvious stuff, certain special issues or whatever compared yeah. to three quarters of it probably isn't worthwhile. And I could probably just take it to a comic book store any day and let them lowball me and just walk away. <laughs> right. Sell them, I mean, but then I'll take, just walk away with the money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but there's, yeah, there's certain ones that I'd want to at least check the value of and make sure that I'm not, I'm not giving away something ridiculous, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly, I, I like the idea that you can make money from it. Yes. I'm losing money from the original spot, but like you said, it's some cost. It's, you got to just move on and, and, and worry I mean, sure. That. You enjoyed it at one time. And yeah. uh, obviously if you don't look at them anymore or don't, you know, don't intend to pass them down to your kids, then they're not bringing you any value at this time. And so they're only worth what they're worth. And Well, they, they didn't bring me that much value back then even because uh, with, with so many, there were certain comics I would read and then there's some certain con comics that I would just, put under the the term collection and <laughs> it's like I'd buy them just to hold them in mint condition. So right. that, that's why I think there could be some of value, but at the same time, I think everybody was collecting comics and, and hockey cards and stuff in the, in the nineties. So yeah. <laughs> it might not be worth much at all. It's another beanie oh. baby really. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> well, who knows? You do that research, and you might uh, you might find that hidden gem that uh, pays for it, pays for it all. Oh, I hope so. Like with with the video games, when I said uh, I sold two thousand worth, one game was worth two hundred dollars. Just a oh. Nintendo game. So, <laughs> like like an old and a rare find. Okay, yeah, exactly. So, uh, you, you can find some surprising things in the, in in your box of junk sometimes. But for sure. Um, okay, so let's go back to. To, to sort of, you, you had three main ways you were making money. We, we, we kind of covered Kijiji and Facebook, uh, and, and we, we covered your blogging, I think, uh, pretty much. Um, so the third one was sort of how you use reward points to, to kind of get the most for your money. Yeah, so this has been kind of an evolution over the last few years. So I first got into kind of credit card rewards. I mean, first of all, you, oh, most Canadians use a debit card for everything and uh, our banks kind of charge us for that premium. There's, you know, limits on how much we can use it. And if you want an unlimited use, then you pay, you know, 10 or 15 bucks a month for that privilege. And so I kind of clued in pretty early that uh, if I use a credit card that pays me some cash back or, you know, grocery rewards or whatever that is, then and uh, then I can get a little bit back for all my purchases that I do all the time mm -hmm. uh, that I'm going to spend anyways. And so that, that began kind of my evolution towards using cashback credit cards. And now it's got to a point where I'm kind of a little obsessed, I would say. I think I might, my wife rolling her eyes right now probably, but I have probably have about 14 credit cards on the go. And oh, it's wow. all for the, you know, the signing bonus uh, a lot of cards offer first year free, uh, so they don't charge you an annual fee. They'll give you 20 or 25,000 points, so this could be used for like travel rewards. And so what I use these for, Tom, is we, um, you know, you don't get a raise and you got this growing family and, you know, I, I don't know about you, but when my kids were little, we didn't travel much, you know, maybe the odd yeah. trip to the mountains and whatnot, but um, now we want to get in. Now they're getting a little older, and we want to we want to go explore. And so we we flew the family to Victoria this year, and kind of explored the West Coast, and that was awesome. It was their first first flight. We paid for that flight with Aeroplan points, and nice. uh, you know, so it only cost me, you know, I would say just over a hundred bucks in like the fees and taxes. Uh, rented a car on points, and so now we've got a big trip planned to Europe next year. We're going to Scotland and Ireland for th over 30 days. And uh, you'll probably fall off your chair when I tell you this, but we're flying there. So four tickets there and back uh, all together for about $600. Nice. Right? And that's just in like fees and taxes. So, so which and, kind of points is this on? So that's Aeroplan. And, uh, and, it, and it all comes down to doing the research. So a lot of people, even if they do collect points, will be like, oh, I got all these points. Like if it's like air miles or something like that, I've got all these points, I guess I'll cash them in for a toaster or something, a Christmas gift or whatever. And that's the absolute worst value for your money. I mean, sure, you can get a new toaster. Uh, and that is a way to get something for free, I guess. It's still but better it's, than the, the debit card, but yeah. Still better than the debit card, but... <laughs> There is so much value to be unlocked, and that's what I've been learning over the last couple of years is that uh, a lot of points or a lot of programs like Aeroplan or like uh, American Express is a very valuable uh, member, their membership rewards currency because it can, be, it can be transferred in a lot of different ways. And so I'll give you an example. We, uh, American Express has a lot of uh, credit cards that offer really generous sign-up bonuses. So you uh, take advantage of those, and you can do it in a way where – Let's say your house insurance bill is due, in, ours is due in August, and we pay it up front, like in advance. So it's, I don't know, it was like 1500 bucks this year. So if I know I have a $1,500 spend coming up, right, I have to spend it anyways. What's the most value I can get for that spend? Well, I look for a credit card that's offering something really lucrative that says if you spend $1,000 or $1,500 or maybe, you know, up to $3,000 in the first three months, we'll give you 25,000 points or 50,000 points. And those points are super valuable because what I end up doing is I do that, I get the points on money I'd spend anyways, and I transfer those to Aeroplan because I wanted to book. So this is all systematic, right? We knew we wanted to book this vacation and I needed to book the flights. And so for a year, we saved up Aeroplan points. What's the best way to get Aeroplan points? So we found it was uh, using an American Express card with American Express membership rewards and then 
transferring those awards to the Aeroplan program. And once we had enough saved up to buy four tickets, you know, then I'm doing all the research on how to unlock the most value from Aeroplan. And so it's not flying Air Canada like everyone uh, seems to think because Air Canada charges huge premiums for fuel surcharges and fees. Um, so what I didn't want was a flight from Calgary to Edinburgh on Air Canada and have to still end up paying Tom, it was probably $2,500 in fees and taxes for your free flight reward. Um, so what you do is and it's not much, it's not a milk run, I would say, but you just have to get a little creative. So if we searched other flights and it was Calgary to Chicago on United Airlines, and then from Chicago to Edinburgh on United Airlines. That total cost was $300, right? Instead of the 2,500. And that was just one way, yeah. right? So uh, we found the reverse trip because we leave from Dublin and, and about the same, same route back to Chicago, back to Calgary and another $300. And so there we got our family to, and to Europe and back for 600 bucks. Nice. And uh, so what's next? Well, we need, some hotels to stay in and we don't stay in hotels um, in every single city, but uh, we do in Edinburgh and we will in Dublin and those can be expensive cities, uh, especially in the summertime. They could cost up to, you know, three, 400 euros a night to, uh, to stay there. Well, I don't want to pay that. I'm a frugal personal finance blogger. And so, uh, well, American express has the, uh, also has an ability to transfer their points to the hotel loyalty program, uh, Marriott, right? And so Marriott has, they just bought Starwood hotels and they're just a massive, uh, hotel chain internationally. And so now next time I want to fill up my points, I'm still looking at American express and I'm looking at Marriott rewards. So I'm transferring those points to Marriott and then I'm able to book, uh, hotels and supplement our stay that way. And with so again, the, we got kind of. Sorry, I was just going to say with, with these credit cards, have you kind of worked back what sort of percentage that would give you? Like, uh, like I often use a cashback credit card and I'll get like my two to 4%. Um, sometimes I'll use air, air miles. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so I get that you have to you have to sort of be careful with how you're booking to get the most value, but do you sort of have an idea what that that value is? So sort of I guess the basically the price of the trip uh, divided by the, the amount you spent. Pretty much, and uh, and with Aeroplan that can be as lucrative as a, at about ten percent. Wow! Right. <laughs> so really depends on the the trip, the flight you get, and how many points it costs you, um, and then how much you have to pay, I guess, over the top of that in fuel surcharges and and whatnot the fees and taxes. But uh, yeah, this one, this, this one to Edinburgh and, and back through Dublin is probably close to 10%. So it's worth the time to look at it. Uh, because again, the toaster, I think is worth about 0.7%. Uh, That's the return on, on uh, when you redeem it for a gift card or when you redeem it for some merchandise and things like that. Right. So I was with you, um, you know, raising kids and, and kind of along the lines of not getting a raise, well, you can supplement your income using a cashback credit card and without any of these fancy schemes that I'm, I'm talking about um, because there's nothing wrong with getting two or 3% back on your spending and supplementing your grocery budget, for example. Um, you know, so I mean, like there's a, you know, PC MasterCard or Costco MasterCard or whatever it is that, uh, that pays you back, um, you know, on all the, all the spending you were going to do. Uh, but we kind of looked at it now just as we're starting to get a little more adventurous in our travels. And we thought, well, how could we take a nice vacation uh, when our income isn't increasing, but we can still do it in a creative way. And so um, almost obsessively, as I mentioned, we're uh, just kind of getting into these, uh, these credit card rewards opportunities. And there's lots out there. I mean, not as many as down in the States uh, where they have a ton of options, but, uh, but they're there here in Canada too. Um, and you know, you got to make absolutely sure Tom that you pay off your credit card, right? I mean, there's not a credit card reward scheme in the world that's worth, uh, missing a payment and paying 19, 20% interest. <laughs> exactly. Right? Uh, the, the other thought I had from this was you mentioned you have 14 cards right now. Is this all under you or is this split between you and your wife? 
Well, my wife's getting into it. She's got a couple cards because we needed to, I think the SPG Marriott, the hotel rewards had a, uh, they just released a new card that gave a bunch of bonus points. So she got in on that as well. So you, we you both signed up for the card. Yeah. So we nice. could both kind of get our, uh, get the points and com- you know, have an opportunity to combine them into one household. And then, and then we were able to book our trip. So she's getting there, but uh, not as <laughs> definitely not as wanting to be as obsessive as I am with it. The the other thought I had here was of these 14 credit cards, um, how, how often are you applying for cards? Is there a certain, certain amount per year uh, that you apply for? And then, and then are you closing some or are these 14 all live right now? Uh, I wouldn't, no, they're not all alive, so or not all active. I have um, I have a main card that I use that you can't get right now. They've discontinued it, but uh, it still has grandfathered benefits that I continue to use. So it's the Capital One uh, MasterCard, the Aspire Travel, yeah. and it pays two percent back. Uh, it does charge an annual fee of one hundred and twenty dollars, but it also gives you ten thousand points every year on your card anniversary or whatever. So it works out to like twenty bucks a year to have. Uh, this 2% back card. So that's like my go-to card if I don't have any kind of weird uh, promos going on. Um, But there's no limit really. I mean, people wonder, you know, is your credit score going to take a dip? Uh, And it does. I think you, with each inquiry, you'd uh, maybe lose 10 points on your credit score. Um, But of course you pay your bills on time and and, uh, have another card that you use a lot and don't go crazy on your utilization in that, in your, your credit score will come right back, you know, so mine's still over 700 and uh, it's not impeccable, but it's because of the activity, but uh, it's nothing that would ever get me turned down from a loan from a bank. And so uh, how it typically works is I'll look for a card that has an opportunity. So one, I think I have three rules. One is, uh, is it first year free? Cause I don't want to pay an annual fee if I don't have to, that's not a deal breaker, but, uh, but I'd rather not. Mm-hmm. Uh, Two is uh, is the sign up bonus worth it? Like if the sign up bonus is five or ten thousand points, so that's fifty or a hundred dollars, I might not go to the trouble. But if it's two hundred dollars or more, then uh, that's I consider that free money. Okay. And so I have to maybe adjust my spending a little bit and use this card for a month, but um, that's a way to earn two hundred bucks, right? And so I just look for those opportunities whenever they become available. Yeah, it could be twice a year. It could be eight times a year, uh, just depending on how the credit card landscape is uh, is working out. And then, um, you know, is that is that minimum spend, or they call it early spend bonus? Is that attainable? Right. So if it's like five thousand dollars in a month, well, that that's going to be a little tricky if I don't have like, right? I don't want to ever spend more than I typically would just because of a, a, just because of a credit card. I don't want it to exactly. impact how, how our household finances are. And so, you know, as, if, if it's first year free, if the sign up bonus is worth it, like 200 bucks or more, and uh, if the spending is not unreasonable, uh, then I'll go for it. And so then it just depends on how many of those opportunities are out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, I, I see it as a, as a way probably this year it's really hard because we were booking a lot of trips and whatnot so we really utilize those benefits if i was just collecting them and they were kind of sitting in an account i could probably give you a a good concrete number of what i think that value is i would say tom is probably at least three thousand dollars worth of either rewards that are kind of sitting there waiting to be used or that i've utilized for hotels or flights this year Um, so Again, when you talk about supplementing your income, if we did $1,000 in Kijiji and Facebook, we did uh, you know $3,000 worth of credit card rewards. And that's an extreme example, but I think most households could easily do $500 in credit card rewards just with a simple cashback card. And, uh, and then, of course, you got the side hustle, which I think has unlimited opportunities. Uh, we've got kind of an online business now, so the business is set up and we withdraw kind of dividends from that business is our side hustle. And if the business does well and we think we need to take out more money from the business, then of course we, we could do that. And a lot of people don't have that opportunity, but, um, but of course the business needs to do well and we need to hustle to, to make that happen. And so that's what we found ourselves doing over the last few years, uh, especially over the last five years as my employment income has stagnated is uh, we've increased those opportunities and got creative on the, on the other selling your stuff and, 
and, and on our own spending for credit card rewards. Well, this has been great. It's, uh, I think if, if you're in a public sector, I'm in a private sector and we're still both not getting any raises, <laughs> that, that means it probably applies to a lot of people. So, so this has given people a few different ideas <laughs> that, that they can kind of make their own race. Um, can you let people know where they can find you? Sure. So I blog at Boomer and Echo. That's our, uh, that's the, that's where I've been blogging since 2010. And then I write the smart money column, a smart money column for the Toronto star. And I write that biweekly. So you can find that at the star. And uh, I'm also at rewards cards, Canada. Speaking of, uh, of re- credit card rewards, uh, I'm obsessed enough that I have a, my own blog about it. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks for being on the show. My pleasure, Tom. Thanks for having me. Thanks to my friend Rob for joining us this week. You can find show notes for this episode at maplemoney.com slash Rob Engen. We've been running this show for half a year now. If you've joined us more recently, I suggest you look back in the archives in your podcast player or at maplemoney.com slash show and check out past episodes. Some of my favorites from early on include chats with Pat Flynn, Barry Choi, Philip Taylor, and J.D. Roth. Thanks for tuning in. I'm looking forward to more episodes with you in the new year.